Welcome back to Getting Sloppy with Safe Slut, a show where we get lit AF and smash some sex stigmas. I'm Trisha, but you can call me Safe Slut. And today we're talking to Anna from Sex and Spanglish. She's a proud Latina woman and a certified sex educator and life coach. I'm Anna, I'm the owner of Sex and Spanglish, and my mission in life is to get Latinas talking about sex just like we do at Chisme. So Anna empowers women by coaching them through their sexual issues and frustrations by utilizing science-based sex education and her background in therapy, which is so fucking cool. So today we're going to be talking about masturbation for people with vulvas. So yeah. let's start off with the cheers. Yeah. What do you want to cheers to? Salud to female masturbation. To female masturbation. Vulva <laughs> masturbation. Yeah. We love vulva. You <laughs> So let's just jump right into it. Yeah. What made you want to be a sex educator, sex coach? Yeah, so the first memory that I have about talking about sex was that I had, I lived across the street from these three little girls. And so they would come over every other weekend and they, I would like be talking to them about sex. And I don't remember exactly what I said, but I have a brother that's eight years older than me. So I imagine I was like up his ass, like listening to what he was talking oh, about. He was like Watching 13 MTV. years old. <laughs> right. He was 13. So I'm sure they were like talking about like, oh, I like this girl, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I don't remember what I was saying, but from then I was like, no, like I want to tell people about sex. I want to tell the world about sex. And, and how old were you during this? I was like five. I love it. <laughs> so, Icon. So like, I did not know. I don't remember what I I was saying I wish I like could remember but I don't so from then on I was like no I want to be a sex educator but there's not like a direct a direct path to be a sex educator right it's like if you want to be a doctor you go to medical school if you want to be a lawyer you go to law school and I really didn't know so I was like oh, okay well that was just a thing like I wanted to do but it's not something that I can do because you know there's not a direct path so I was like I'm just gonna be a teacher I love educating you know all these things so I get to college and I'm like oh maybe I'll do sex therapy like that's a thing right so I get into it and I was like yeah this is really very like professional very um like white centered, very, you know, like stereotypical, like cis het gender. Hetero. Yeah. yeah. I was like, no, this is not for me. And like, because I really wanted to work with the Latino population, I was like, this is not gonna work. And then someone introduced me to social work. So I was like, okay, cool. I'll get an MSW, I'll be a social worker, I'll be a sex therapist. And I got introduced to coaching and I was like, this is way more laid back. Like, this is my personality. Like, I am not And you like, can kind of do it on your own terms kind of right, thing. Right, exactly. I have more access to different people. Like, I have clients in Mexico and like other countries cool. now. And so if I was a therapist, I wouldn't have that like benefit, right? And so I was like, yeah. No, I'm going to be a coach. Like, it's essentially the same thing. I have a therapy background, so I do have a master's in social work. So I can be a therapist if I want to. I do have the experience, but I'm like, I'm not going to become licensed because I want to be my own boss. I want right. to have more freedom. Um, and so, yeah, that's how I got into it. I love it. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> so I feel like there's so much stigma when it comes to people with vulva, like, masturbating. And, like, whether it's, like, talking about it or doing it, there's just, like, so much shame and stigma why do you think that exists? Yeah, I think it's a lot because like female pleasure or like vulva pleasure wasn't a thing until recently. So not like last year, but like, you know, within maybe the last like five to 10 years, it wasn't like a thing. No right? one talks it was about like, it. Right. It yeah. was like sex or not even masturbation, just like sex in general was like, you know, for conception and, yeah. you know, like all these things. It's and taboo so, to talk about, taboo to do. Right. Yeah. And so it was like, well, why are you going to masturbate? Because it's just for pleasure. Whereas it's like, wild because I mean, the thing is majority of people masturbate. Right. Um, and it's super healthy, normal, great, so much fun. Right. <laughs> it's exceptional. But like, why, like, I just feel like purity culture is so in, like in our, like in our society like why like do you think it's like religious based just like yeah patriarchy I, all the things all of yeah it. yeah i think it's like a combination right because i think that there's like this misconception about like what masturbation is right i think that a lot of times when people think masturbation it's like oh i'm like diddling myself like <laughs> till i we're finish, in chicago right looking right. the <laughs> Right, or like whatever, even if it's like a penis or whatever, yeah. right? Like I'm touching myself until ejaculation and it's like specifically for pleasure. And in like a patriarchal society, like vulvas aren't supposed to get pleasure or like it's 
prioritize less, right? So it's like on the bottom of, you know, the priority list, the afterthought, right? Like, oh yeah, like, well, if you get pleasure, then like, that's cool, but that like, that's not the point. And I think the, the huge misconception about it is that everyone masturbates. Like people maybe as adults don't do it now, but as children, like that's how we learn. We play with our genitals. Like it's super mm -hmm. common for a parent or someone changing a diaper to move a baby's hand out of the way because like they have their hand like on their vulva or their penis, right? Mm -hmm. And it's because they're exploring. That's how we learn. And like studies actually show that embryos actually like ma essentially masturbate in I utero. did not know that. Yeah, so like they actually, some of them actually Whoa. like masturbate in utero. And so, but we don't know that. Like, you know, common, like it's like lay person yeah. don't know that. And, but that's how we explore. We're not, we're, yes, we're doing it because it but feels it's good. It just feels good. Right. But then us as adults, we're like, oh yeah, that's fucking disgusting. It's sex. We put all our like projection and bias mm -hmm. on, you know, these children that are just doing it because it fucking feels good. Feels like good. Yeah. just the same reason that I like massage my back because it fucking feels good. Yeah. It's the same reason that I'm touching my vulva. Yeah. Like, yeah. And same if an thing. orgasm happens, cool. Right. Um, but like for women that's, or like people with vulvas, that's just not really as talked about and it's just not seen as important um i even remember like with like growing up with like friends like i feel like none of us really like talked about masturbation or anything because mm -hmm. it was just kind of like Ooh, hee -hee. like yeah you can't really talk about it um so i just think it's really interesting and i'm glad we are changing that um now you can even get uh vibrators at sephora yeah that's becoming a thing well one, I did not know that. Yeah, I, I don't <laughs> know if they, like, awesome. they've launched it yet, but right. it's like coming, and yeah, that's, that's just like awesome. so. That's so cool. It's coming. That's yeah, <laughs> it's coming. Yeah, that's <laughs> awesome. No, and I think that like when it comes to like you know vulva masturbation, we're talking about like oh you know well females aren't supposed to feel pleasure you know like all these things and so it's like we oftentimes as like vulva owners think like oh it's because the penis gives us pleasure or mm -hmm. the dildo gives us pleasure right and it's usually right. like a penis and so it's we're all about seeking like penetration outside <laughs> right it's like we're seeking things outside of us that give us pleasure rather than recognizing like pleasure comes from us like if i don't relax enough to feel pleasurable mm -hmm. regardless of if it's a partner like if it's a penis it's or if it's a dildo all up here right exactly so so like I'm the one that has the fucking power but yet we're socialized to believe that like oh it's coming from outside of us mm -hmm. and that's not the case and I also feel like a lot of um, like hetero men also really feel like their dick is like a magic wand and all they have to right. do is just like put it in. us and you're like right did you come? like this isn't fucking Hogwarts <laughs> like yeah yeah I mean I, I wish like it yeah. worked like that right but, I mean it's also most most people with the vulvas can't even orgasm from, from penetration so there you exactly. go. We need we need other things, and we need to normalize clit stimulation, nipple stimulation, like right. all these different things that can get us off. So, what are some common misconceptions about people with vulvas masturbating? Yeah, I would say that like it's dirty. Like you don't need to feel pleasure when you're having sex. Like whether that be solo sex or you know partnered sex. Um, I would also say that it centers a lot around like you know males right so like penis owners and talking about like oh well if you masturbate then you're not gonna need the man right and so it feeds a lot into like the male ego of you know like oh well, they masturbate and they're getting pleasure on their own then what's gonna happen mm -hmm. next like it's like this they're intimidated slippery by your sex toy <laughs> right yeah. it's like this slippery slope of that um and then also talking about like you know oh well if you finger yourself like what does that do to like your labia and like your like how is your pussy gonna look afterwards like, I feel are like you that's gonna be like stretched a huge out? thing I feel like growing up it's like yeah if you masturbate your that's why your labia gets bigger or like right if you yeah if you finger yourself like or you sleep with a bunch of people like your vagina will get loose and like yeah that's so silly <laughs> yeah, it makes no sense. So like, okay, let, like, let's pretend for a second, because I'm not, but let's pretend for a second that I'm married and I've been married for like, I don't know, 20 years, whatever, right? That would mean I would be married up when I was like 10, but you know what I mean? But, <laughs> yeah, we're young. So let's say, yeah, yeah but so we'll let's pretend. say <laughs> I've been married for like 20 years. I've been sleeping with the same person. He's the only person I've been sleeping with. So same penis, you know, whatever. And my pussy's fine, but if I'm the same age and I've had sex with, let's say, like five people, then somehow my vagina is like all over the place. Yeah. Like that makes no fucking sense. 
so illogical. Right. And like again right. goes back to that like patriarchal thing that like pure like purity culture, like right. people with vulvas should wait till marriage. Like if you right. like virginity is like such a big deal. Mm -hmm. It's so ridiculous. Right. And also like I can give pound to like a ten pound baby and it go back, but like all of a sudden your penis that is like yeah. this big is like yeah. gonna Honestly I feel like we gotta start <laughs> telling people like, ooh, if you sleep around and you masturbate too much, like your dick is gonna get really small. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> that's basically what they're saying. <laughs> that's basically what like, they're saying. It's, that's their thought process. Ugh, yeah, so it makes no sense. So silly. So funny story. So I went to Mexico recently. Uh, my family's from there, and so I went and I started my period, and I was like, "Fuck!" I was like, "Okay, well, let me go ask around for a tampon." So I like went to a bunch of different stores, pharmacies, and whatnot, and they didn't have any. I went into this health store first. That was like my first inclination to go to this health store because I was like, "Oh, they'll probably have them," you know, whatever. And I was like, oh, do you have tampons? And they're like, looking around, like as if people were listening like, in. What, what's that? And they're like, no. And I was like, okay, bye. <laughs> just like yeah, and that's so that's so wild. So, that yeah, because a lot of times people think, and this is still super common, that like, oh, if you put a tampon in, like you're gonna lose your virginity because your hymen is gonna break, and it's like all these things, right? Fun fact: I went to the gyno two weeks ago. And I was just like, oh, you know, I've like noticed this like thing here. Like, do I like like what is that? Mm -hmm. And she was like, some of your hymen's still intact. That's insane. And I was like, how is that possible? But <laughs> it, like, it, okay. it's, it's yeah, but that, it just goes to show that like literally virginity is not real. Right. Hymen's like it, like sometimes it will break if you're really active as a kid. Like sometimes it will still be there. Right. It's like a really rare case. So I feel like really cool about it that I right. still kind of have some. Right. Um, taking applications for anyone who wants to break it. <laughs> just kidding. Um, but yeah, it just it just goes to show that like it's truly just like. Yeah. And it it's totally it a social construct. It's Because like for men, there, that there's nothing where it's like, oh, you lost your virginity. Like it's like this huge deal. Right. But it is for a woman. And right. I remember having a friend who her boyfriend at the time, they were going to have sex and he was like, I want you to use a hairbrush first so that I don't have to deal with like the blood or like you being in pain or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's totally a social construct because all throughout the world, like different countries, different continents, whatever, like there's different ideas of what that means. And then if we're talking about like, because technically like humans are animals, right? Like we're mammals. And so there's other species that like their hymens, I want to say it's like dolphins or whales. I can't remember which one. Dolphins but, like, are horny. It, it like regrows every time. <gasps> and so it's like, okay, well then oh, wow. what is the definition then, that. right? Like yeah. there's no clear definition and it's just there to be there. And some people actually have to have it surgically removed because it's like painful and like all these things. So like it doesn't fucking make sense. And it didn't come up until purity culture like began infiltrating society. Right. So why does it matter? Yeah, it's stupid. <laughs> yeah, I agree. So there are so many different types of orgasms yeah. that people with vul vulvas can can you know do it. So what are what are some of the ways that we can orgasm? Yeah. So my favorite like I guess fun fact would be that like the way that orgasm any type of orgasm doesn't matter what is experienced in the body is similar to um, anxiety except like it's like exit like biologically speaking the same thing is happening but it's ex experienced in like a more like positive manner in the Whoa. body versus anxiety okay, yeah cool super cool i have a lot of yeah. both a lot of orgasms a lot of anxiety yeah cool so like i'm always orgasming yeah like, i'm yeah. always in an orgasmic state <laughs> yeah that's awesome <laughs> yeah and so i think that's like the like first fun fact about that and i think like the fun part about vulvas is that it's like various parts of like the genitalia in general like all humans can orgasm from different places in the body so if we're talking about like you know different erogenous zones in our bodies like nipples you know anuses like we all have those but if we're talking about specifically about vulvas there's different places like on a vulva that we can orgasm. So whether it be clitoral or vaginally, you know, the G spot, things like that. Mm -hmm. And so I think those are all fun places and it just depends like on the person. And everyone's like, different. Everyone has like right. different like Their pleasure thing. points. Yeah. Not everyone's the same. It's like, I forget what the number is. Cause like, I'm not a mathematician. I don't know. I don't know. Girl. What, yeah. <laughs> but like not a lot of people can orgasm from penetration right. alone. Yeah. Me, me as well. I cannot right. do that, which maybe one day. Um, but yeah, I think it, that's another misconception that like people can just orgasm for penetration or like it just 
and that's yeah. most of the time it's not true. Yeah. Um. Wait. Let's also talk about sleep orgasms. That's fucking what. Like that's. So I tight. have like, sleep I don't orgasms have to do anything. all the time, and I'll wake up and be like, "Yo, I didn't even do anything." Like, right. And I'll like oh, wake God. up and be like, "That yeah. was cool." Okay. So the the last one I remember because I like when I'm asleep, like I'm asleep, like I'm dead to the world. Oh. Like for all you know, I yeah. could be dead. Like, yeah. You oh, don't I fall know. asleep and head hits the pillow. Right. It's yeah. Done. It's okay. Over. So I stayed at my partner's cousin's house, and so like we stayed in a bedroom, whatever, and we didn't do anything because he was like, "No, this is weird." I'm like, "Okay, whatever. I'm going to sleep." So I went to sleep, and I remember I woke up, like, pop, well, in my mind, it was five minutes later. But, you know, with sleep, you're like, it could be an it hour be, later. Yeah, I don't know. And so I woke up, and I was like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, did they hear me? Was I talking? Like, what was going on? And I looked up at my partner's story, and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to go back to sleep. But I was just like, this is fucking weird. It's like, so weird. Yeah, it's so weird. I, I, yeah. It's weird. I also get them more around my period, which is interesting yeah because yeah. you're like super sensitive yes yeah, super yeah. sensitive yeah um they're really great i really recommend them if like yeah. i don't know they're just like a I, you can't control it it just like, like happens it's like i don't know yeah yeah there's, there's also there's, something called like exercise orgasms which i've had yeah. one yeah. where i was like you have to be like really a lot of cardio yeah. and then all of a sudden you're just like Whoa. Yeah. yeah, it's weird. I also think it depends, like, on your anatomy, right? Like, what's externally happening? Mm-hmm. Like, how is it? Like, and what are you doing? Like, are you running? Are you doing, like, a certain thing that kind of, like, you know, hits well, it? Every yeah. orgasm, though, is all mental, though, Essen- essentially. Yeah. It's, like, yeah. if you're feeling, like, anxious or you're worried about something or, like, you can't get right. into your body, like, it's just not going to happen. Yeah, I talk about that all the time about how a lot of times, especially as people that have been socialized as women, like, we're, like, in the moment, like, whether we're masturbating or, like, having sex with a partner, you know, whatever, and we're, like, oh, like, this feels good, and then we're thinking about, like, oh, I got to go pick up this, the kids from school in an hour, I got to mm-hmm. wash the dishes, like, my to-do list, like, all these yeah. things, and it's, like, well, no wonder you're not enjoying yourself because you're thinking about other things. It's, like, mm-hmm. if you're going to a party and thinking about work the next day like you're not going to enjoy yourself because you're not allowing yourself to relax and it goes back to my point earlier that we're talking about like oh it's like this external pleasure right and it's like okay well if you're thinking about other things it's it would be great if we not... could just it could just be physical and like you don't have you could be thinking about anything right. like, like but you're sadly, not allowing your, like yeah lot, you're not lot. allowing yourself to like relax enough to feel that and I know that a lot of people that have been socialized as women are like I don't know how to relax like myself included like I know I've definitely oh half the time that. I'm masturbating and sometimes I'm like I have to stop because I'm just so anxious I literally can't relax right yeah. now yeah so why do you think that vulva owners sexuality is seen as secondary yeah I think it goes all back to like purity culture right mm-hmm. so like oh well sex is for procreation so like they don't necessarily need to be aroused in order Mm -hmm. to like have sex it's just like oh ejaculation needs to happen from the penis and then a baby is made and then like it doesn't matter if you're orgasm or not imagine if to make a baby the vulva owner had to (laughs) orgasm (laughs) there'd be no people in this yeah (laughs) we'd yeah we'd all die right (laughs) none of us would be born um i say we have to take a shot now let's definitely cheers to clits how are we doing it Okay, in true Latina fashion, we're gonna go pa arriba, pa arriba, pa abajo, pa abajo, pa centro, pa centro, pa dentro, pa dentro. To clits. Ooh, to clits. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah, thanks for having yes. me. Yes, and stay tuned for our next episode. You wanna talk about sex, but we're not allowed.